maybe at home. Who knows where you're at? But we got a very exciting episode for you today, folks. We got some really interesting topics that I can't wait to get to. I hope you enjoy it. So let's start off with our first topic. Something along the lines of a maybe B celebrity army hammer breaks silence as graphic DMs scandal explodes. So army hammer, you know, I can't say that I'm much of a fan or I know of him too well, but he's been in some movies and the scandal is pretty uh, spicy, folks. So let's get into it because it has to do with these DMs, these direct messages that he's sending to women who are not his wife. Okay, so he's going through a divorce. Actor Army Hammer has broken his silence about the social media scandal swirling around his swirling, swirling around him this week as various unverified Instagram messages that appeared to be written by him circulated online. Okay, and for those, what's the controversy? What are these texts? Well. Their graphic messages, which include fantasies about rape, cannibalism, and BDSM. It says in a statement in a statement published by Variety, Hammer, who's only 34, called the claims against him BS and said he was now dropping out of his current movie project. I'm not responding to this BS claims, but in light of the vicious and spurious online attacks against me, I cannot in good conscience now leave my children for four months to shoot a film in the Dominican Republic. Lionsgate is supporting me in this, and I'm grateful to them for that. I don't... I call BS on that, because there's no reason for him not to go shoot a movie. His kids are not in any danger. He doesn't need to leave them. I mean... He doesn't need to stay with them because of some social media text controversy. You know, his kids are young. I don't think anybody. So what? He's getting death threats over these messages he sent. He can't leave his kids now. His kids shouldn't even be aware of this. I think they're like really young. He's 34. How old can his kids be? Let's see. But let's get into what's really the interesting thing is. These bizarre texts that he's sending. So let's read into these a little bit and see what exactly is he um, telling these people. So his name began trending on social media this week as screenshots of various private direct messages, which appeared to be sent from his official Instagram account circulated on Twitter. He said, I want to drink your blood. Why the distance? Hammer allegedly wrote in one shared DM. Another saw the star allegedly write, I've cut the heart out of a living animal before and eaten it while it's still warm. Other messages show Hammer allegedly claim he's a 100% a cannibal. I want to eat you. That's so scary to admit. I've never admitted that before. So guys, okay, you just live to obey me and be my slave, he's telling her. Another message that he sent from Hammer's account reads, I will own you. That's my soul, my brain, my spirit, my body. Would you come and be my property till you die? If I wanted to cut off one of your toes and keep it with me in my pocket. So I always had a piece of you in my possession. This this guy is just talking out of his butt, trying to hit on girls in a very odd and peculiar way. Okay? Okay. You need to tell somebody that you want to eat them. I think it may have more of a, it may mean something else than like literally eating them like a cannibal. But then he does reference to cannibalism. But I think it's in this, again, BDSM way of like, I want to eat you. I think that's his ex-wife right here showing up. She came out and had nothing but terrible things. To say, says, Army appears to be a monster, and a lot of these women have reached out to Elizabeth, and although she didn't want to admit it to herself at first, she knows now they're speaking the truth. You know, if you read 
just the text that he's sending, they are odd and peculiar and slightly uh, disturbing. But when, when two adults who were texting each other, kind of because they're seeing each other, or especially when the other one, I'm sure these women knew who he is and he's married. So... You know, you say things on text or online that you maybe wouldn't necessarily say. You, you, you can be brave or you can say, I'm 100% accountable and I want to eat you. You know, that's just game. It's lame. It's no good game. But he's he's spitting game at, this, at whoever he's texting, talking about how he wants to cut a piece of her off and keep it with him. Or be my slave. You're my soul. My spirit. You know... Do they need to be piling on on the guy? Because he's a monster? It's easy to call somebody a monster when they're writing about wanting to eat people. So, you know, he made the bed. He's sleeping in it now, I guess. Moving on. Let's get into a real famous person. Not some B-level, but like the top of the game celebrity, which is... The man himself, Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise has introduced intimidating COVID secure robots to patrol the Mission Impossible set. So Tom Cruise was in the news a couple weeks ago because he just went off. Some people said it was staged. But he just went off on some, I guess, producers, some, you know, behind the scenes crew on the movie set. Apparently, I guess they're just doing their job and they're but they're huddled up and they're too close to each other. They're not social distancing. And Tom Cruise just lays into them, talking about how they're the gold standard, trying to save the industry. They have to lead by example. So certainly Tom Cruise doesn't want to be out, you know. Having to yell at everybody all the time. So what does he do? Robots. You know? They're taking over everybody's job. The Mission Impossible Films are teaming with handy gadgets from the famous mask and voice changers to gloves that let you scale a Dubai skyscraper. Now Tom Cruise has introduced the latest COVID technology. Two state-of-the-art robots that will patrol the set of Mission Impossible 7. According to The Sun, Cruise paid huge sums for the robots. They will not only be an intimidating reminder to obey the COVID safety rules when filming resumes this week at Warner Brothers Warner Brothers Studio in Leavesden, Hertfordshire, but it can also administer on-the-spot tests to staff. A source on the film set said Tom is so serious about making sure the shoot isn't shut down that he's splashed out on these robots as he can't be everywhere to ensure people are behaving themselves. The robots are really sophisticated and rather intimidating. It's like the Terminator, only not as violent. Oh, that's too bad. That would really get them, you know, going along, obeying protocol if it was the Terminator. If you're not wearing your mask, boom, terminated. Literally, not figuratively, literally by the robot. Cruz has made his feelings about COVID safety extremely clear. His famous tirade, which we already talked about, directed at the crew members for failing to social distance on the set, became a viral sensation last month. So, what? It says, Cruz has already spent serious money on ensuring that Mission Impossible franchise filming can continue, including... You know, half a mil on an old cruise ship where cast and crew can isolate. It may seem extreme, but the shoot has run into problems of four or 12 people on set in Venice testing positive for COVID. That led to a crisis call between crews and the director and Warner Brothers on how to keep the shoot afloat. Let's get into this, though, folks. Okay, so imagine... And I'm not trying to say working on a film set or, you know, that's a normal job. I guess maybe for some people it is. If you worked in the movie industry and in the setting and lighting, it's kind of a normal job to you. But it's not the normal job to everybody. 
But can you imagine at your job, there's robots and they're not like manufacturing things. They're monitoring you, folks. That's like next level creepy stuff. And it's no surprise that it would be Tom Cruise because he's out there, folks. He is out there. Wait up. I think we came across something that we've talked about on the show. It says that there's 24 comments on this Yahoo article, which you know for a while we have been talking about how they had disappeared. It says here, welcome to Yahoo comments. Please keep conversations courteous and on topic. So I think it's back. The comments are back, folks. It's, this is going to lead to so much better um, content because we can do podcasts strictly on people's strictly on people's um, posts. <laughs> and we're leading off with some, um, obviously, some sarcasm. Says those were spectacular videos and pictures. Thank you, Yahoo. Ha ha. Bring back comments on everything, Yahoo. Where's the robot pictures? Let's see here. Says there are no robots unless we can see pictures of them, right? No pictures. Pictures or it didn't happen, right? Is that what people say? This is so they're they're bringing they're bringing back the robots, folks. Not they're bringing back the robots. The robots are there. They're bringing back the comments on some articles. I mean, how crazy can you get on a Tom Cruise robot article? I'm sure there aren't any comments on any Trump articles, folks. But don't take my word for it. It's yet to be seen. We'll see what happens. Moving on. Next. So Tom Cruise bought robots to monitor the set. And I guess there's video evidence of these robots. I I have to see these robots. I'm going to do some follow-up research on this, folks. If you know, if you can get a photo of these robots, send me it. Send me an email at jamensdaily at gmail.com and we'll put it up. We'll get it up. Let's move on. More controversy with another guy, another actor that I guess he's famous. People know him. I just don't. Very, you know, very enough. I wish maybe, I, maybe, you know, part of doing this podcast is learning things. So now that I'm learning about people, then I can look into them, see if they're interesting or not. On the internet, folks, there is this guy who is an actor and he's been working out. And he's Indian. Or South Asian, and he's on the—I mean, he's on—he's in the movies. He's a good-looking fellow, and he gets ripped. And so, just like anything, it doesn't matter who you are. If you get buffed and ripped, and then you put it on the internet, like on Twitter, or Instagram, or something, you're always, no matter what, gonna have trolls. I'm trying to get it up for you, folks. But we're running into some difficulty with it. Don't know what's going on. Let's try again. Let's try again. Come on now. Yeah. Well, guys, you know, let's let's see if I can find it somewhere else. And, you know, I just put on here controversy. I didn't even name it. It's some Indian actor. He got ripped. He put photos on there. And then, of course, you can always have racist trolls who talk smack. And so then the whole article is this, like, liberal arts graduate degree major hours and hours of research into all the different inter interdisciplinaries of how 
it can all it's all related to racism and white supremacy because it's not only racist like you're not only racist if you think a south asian guy from india can't be super buff and hot you know we're all like that apparently because of and I, this article would probably would explain it better but you know obviously it's not coming up so jamin's gonna have to do it for for the article i'm just gonna have to tell you about the article and just opine okay but it's like because a couple racist trolls make fun of him now all of a sudden we get a whole article talking about how the reason why some random loser butthole wants to make a lame joke about some dude who's buff is because of white it's white supremacy you know it all comes full circle to that so apparently the reason why you don't look at south asians or indians as sex symbols which i'm sure people in india who watch indian movies with their movie stars think of them as sex symbols and good looking so i don't even know where they're coming from okay but apparently here in the united states when you see these people you this guy who's worked out and is buff uh when you dismiss it out of hand for any reason it can just be because you're a butthole and you're hating all hate in the in the way i'm talking about it if you're just being a hater and you're hating on people you know there's like e equal opportunity hate hateration to go around okay so if i'm hating on this guy it can't always just be you know drawn back to racism okay people who just hate because they're they're born haters all right and so when you're trying to tell me and explain to me that the reason why they don't see this guy as buff and sexy is due to racism really have to and then you explain it because oh because of all the the tropes all the propaganda everything you see in your mind's eye Forever and ever and ever has always been how, you know, beauty is white and fair. So when you see uh, anything to the contrary, it can't be. It can't be that. No, no, no. I've already been explained to and told by white people what, what beauty, what, what certain things are to be. And then, so if it's not that, then it can't be. These are these are ridiculous notions, folks. I wish I had the article. We're gonna have to move it on to the next one because everybody's thinking, "What the heck?" Jamin's over here on his high horse, talking about complicated issues, and I didn't even have the article that gives the full context to what I'm trying to talk about. But you know, folks, the good segue out of this topic would just be. That, you know, this is the whole Biden era, era right? It's the, 20, the 21st. So it's the whole Biden era. We just lived through four years of constant Twitter wars, meme wars. Now maybe everybody needs to look in the mirror and look at themselves in the face. Including all the writers of this clickbait race propaganda. And say, can we do better? I think we can, folks. I think we can. Moving on to our last topic. This one is a doozy. Because back in the day when you could comment on Yahoo um, articles... You would always come across articles about those on death row and when they're put to death or if they're fixing to get um, be executed. And they talk about the story and um, what they did. And in the past, you would read the comments and about 95% of people would be like, good riddance, took too long, you know. Those are some of the criticisms of um, 
the process of death row and everything. And it, you know, these people are in jail for 20 years when they're guilty as hell. But it is what it is. But then you you have articles like this, which isn't an outright sympathetic article for the perpetrator, but it pretty much is. So it's coming from HuffPost. And it says, Lisa Montgomery's final hours before the Trump administration executed her. Okay, so it wasn't, you know, the court system. You know, the people, how about the jury of her peers who found her guilty and then the judge who sentenced her? And, you know, so like release the people's court. But I guess you can put it where they want to put it at Trump's feet. So Lisa Montgomery was executed by Trump's administration. Okay, folks, this lady. I'm going to come across a photo of her. There she is. When you hear about what she did. And the phone call. This is the other thing. The, the mother of the victim. There's a video. There's not a video. There's an audio recording of the mother of the victim calling 911. Okay? It's insane. So Lisa Montgomery was put to death early Wednesday morning at the federal prison in Terre Haute, Indiana. Shortly after the Supreme Court cleared the path for her execution, serious doubts about whether Montgomery, who was mentally ill, was competent for execution, did not stop the government from killing her. Here's the thing, folks. Every single person who's getting put to death, whether I'm just, is an observation from what I read, every single one, every, almost every time, there is a argument for competency. Like, you have to go that route if you're trying to save yourself, okay? So, yeah, I'm not trying to say this person was, you know, a Rhodes Scholar. But, you know, 99% of adults know right from wrong. So whether or not she was smart and educated is, has nothing to do with whether or not at the time she knew she was killing somebody, okay? Which she did because this is a planned, premeditated murder. Okay, folks, let's get into it. The 52-year-old who murdered a pregnant woman in 2004 and abducted her fetus, had been the only woman on death row. For years, she had been housed at a prison in Texas for women with special mental health needs and treated for bipolar disorder and complex PTSD stemming from her abusive childhood. Now, let us they did something here, which is very... First time I've ever seen this done in in language and how things are described, folks. Because people just make stuff up, okay? Is there such thing as complex PTSD? I don't know. I'm, because I don't want to look foolish, which I really don't, which I do care. I don't want to look foolish, so I, I want to know... Is there such thing as complex TSD? It says here, well, there, there is a Wikipedia. Complex post-traumatic disorder. So there's a C PTSD. Wow. Yeah. You know... I don't know. I need to get somebody to explain to me the difference. Because PTSD, you would think is just PTSD. but And then there's levels of it. So you have severe PTSD. You have a minor PTSD. But then to say it's complex PTSD. I don't know. It sounds kind of strange. In the days leading up to her death, her lawyers argued that she was incompetent for execution because she was in a state of psychosis and not mean, 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 meaningfully aware of what was about to happen to her. Well, that's you know good for her. In that way, the Eighth Amendment prohibits executing the prisoner who cannot rationally understand why they are to be executed. Which, again, I don't know. I gotta know. I guess at the time, they're trying to paint this woman off as if she's severely um, 
had severely severe mental delays and like has the wherewithal of an eight year old or something i don't know I, I didn't surely that's not the case if they just let her be executed again i'm telling you a lot of these um a lot of the they're not accused they they've been sentenced so a lot of these prisoners they always go with the defense of you know they don't know any better or they didn't know what they were doing it's pretty sad um it's pretty sad that they have to go that route at the end you know i'm, just, they, I'm too dumb i was too dumb to know right from wrong i'm too dumb to know now there's no sympathy you know when there used to be the uh comments that were allowed on it again it was 99 percent like good riddance you know you would find well it's too bad you, you would find one sympathetic and not to the person but always to the, you know about the system of sorts yeah. but one of the key things folks that you, you're here with me listening to my take is that it's not just the, st the story within this story is how the way they're framing it and how this is written. It's on Huffington Post. So you know how it, they, they're always setting up a narrative, this, this framework in which you find trying to find sympathy for the, um, the perpetrator. You know, in this, let's see, let's keep going down here. Let's see what they say. All the lead up is about how they, you know, they killed her, I guess. And, you know, she would have lasted, if all this would have been set up maybe another month from now, she may have lived because Biden would have stopped it. So here it is, and this is what the article is talking about. The first person account of her, of this lady's last day alive. It says, I understand you were with Montgomery today, the day of the execution. Can you describe what happened? I went to the prison in the morning and spent four hours with her. During that time, her spiritual advisor, John Francisco, came. He gave us all communion and talked with Lisa about... If things went poorly tonight, how he hoped to care for her while the ex in the execution chamber. He knew Lisa when she was a little girl. He was the bus driver who picked her up to take her to church, and his mom was her Sunday school teacher. Okay. Oh, he told her some stories saying that he was going to sing, but then he wasn't allowed to. Did she say anything? Let's find out. Oh, I just. So again, look, she wiggled her little fingers. She wiggled her fingers a little. You know, it was a needless, in, uh, she was deprived of her spiritual advisor. It was a needless indignity. Here's the thing. If she is so incompetent to not understand that she's getting put to death, yet she's competent enough to realize that her spiritual advisor isn't going to be there, I guess. You can make that argument in a way which, you know, a little kid wants his mother with him or something, but... I don't know. The logic doesn't hold up there in this argument for that person. Again, this isn't written. This is written for the bleeding heart who thinks, oh, you know, we shouldn't put people to death when they commit heinous crimes, you know, because of, I don't know, who knows, all kinds of social justice reasons. But, you know, don't forget, some lady was brutally murdered, mutilated, and had her fetus ripped out of her body and then left for dead okay come on now where do you where do your sympathy lies where do your sympathies lie and then you come over here and you read or attempt to read an article that is 
almost solely written for the accuser and giving all kinds of mitigating um, and highlighted points as to why, you know, somehow some egregious act had befallen on them. Again, this lady who murdered somebody. You let me know. It's, it's fairly controversial, the death penalty. You know, a lot of times, you know, there's some punishments in which they're meant to be a deterrent, a deterrent, so you don't continue to commit crimes. But unfortunately, people kill people, crimes of passion, other things. So there really isn't a, t a deterrent. Nobody's ever deterred from killing somebody. It just happens, or they're just killers. They're crazy. So there's really not a deterrent. So the whole fact of a death penalty is has nothing to do with uh, rehabilitation, or or really even maybe um, or punishment or deterrence. It's all about justice for perceived justice for the victim. And when the victim is murdered like that, then it's justice for their family members. And in many ways, people still feel this way. Justice for you murdering my family member in a heinous way is you being also put to death. Very, I don't know, is it folks at home? Send me an email, jamesdaily at gmail.com. Is that a very, very barbaric? Is it? I guess. I need to find a guest who can um, who feels very strongly about that, like strongly against the death penalty, and they can bring up all these different aspects of it that I haven't heard of. You know who we have? I have somebody in mind who's a lawyer, and I think is against the death penalty. We can get into it with folks. Until then. This was, just a couple of, how many, maybe one, two, three, about four different topics. You know, the whole setup, folks, it's longer than I was hoping. I'm still trying to find a way, because I'll find the articles, and then in order to put them into OBS, you can already see we're having some technical difficulties with some lagging. It just, you know, these websites have so much... So many cookies and video running in them. I think that's one of the reasons that it lags up the system, the OBS. When I have them all in queue to talk about. Anyways, folks, don't forget. This podcast is brought to you by Sage Choice Insurance. Go to quotefromjamin.com. You can get quotes from us for insurance. We can save you money. Okay, folks? So why we're doing this. So why I'm doing this. To have fun. To entertain. But then also, quote from Jamin. Go there. Fill it out. We get notified. We help you out on your insurance. It's that simple. Easy peasy. Thanks a lot again, folks. Sticking with us. Jamin's Daily. Me, Jamin. Your host. Thanking you. And reminding you to stick with us. Because the best is yet to come.